magical powers and it's kind of like what happens versus Haas. I'm very curious to see if a laser is going to be able to overcome the Bly factor over here as he is a still heavy favorite coming into this match. In the top right hand side, our underdog. We're going to lag. Who's it going to be? F referee C. Oh my goodness. All right, well. Please. I'm uh, happy it wasn't me at least. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, who's more important, Ravi? The commentators or the referee? I'm gonna decide, I, I've decided <laughs> we're going to keep going. <laughs> yes. We'll be fine, I'm sure. We'll be okay. Yeah. We ha I, I hope that we have another referee in here. Like, someone set to referee things so that we can unpause. Actually, I don't... If there's it's no been referee, a while, you can just, anyone can unpause again. Or the players can. Okay. It automatically changes that as if the referee yeah. leaves the game. Yep. Okay. It's been a while, so. That's all good. No, it's, uh. Okay. It works pretty easy. We should be fine. I think I'm referee too, honestly. We'll see. <gasps> we'll find out. I mean, you you do make a good referee, so I believe it. Thank you. I don't know why. Oh, they just, they just insta-dropped as well. They didn't even get asked. All right, well, away we go. Uh, in the top right, our Red Zerg player is Lai. <laughs> And down in the bottom left, we have our blue Zerg player. He is a laser. Representing Team Liquid. Yeah. I, um, like I say, like, Bly played in the most Bly fashion ever to get here. So, the problem isn't CVZ, that's just called playing CVZ. So, I almost <laughs> feel like this matchup now is like, it works against Bly because all of a sudden you're just kind of doing the kind of, you know, your opponents are ready for that kind of stuff, and they're, you know, they're well versed mm -hmm. in it because they all do it to each other anyway. So it's a bit like, huh, does Bly lose a bit of his star power with ZVZ, or does it empower him further? And funnily enough, a laser opens gas pool, which is not just a normal kind of, like, safety thing. Like, a safety thing would be pool hatch gas. Gas pool mm -hmm. is a very quick link speed, and that means that a laser is going to put some pressure on early here on altitude, and he wants to bring the fight to Bly straight away. Yeah. And I don't hate it. A laser is actually, he's in my mind, like a very different form of aggressive Zerg player compared to Bly. Bly is the, I'm going to go absolutely buck wild inside of your main and your natural. I'm going to do proxy hatches. I'm going to do wild Nidus worm plays. And it's just going to be very strange and out there. A laser is kind of like the more reeled back aggressive Zerg player who's found obviously a little bit more success and everything. But if he is able to just put on these kind of aggressive plays and stuff, and he's planning this stuff out, I really actually like it. I, I think this is a really good way that you can try to punish Bly if he tries to play a little bit greedy to do his own later game aggression or something, or just be safe if Bly throws out his own aggression. Is we do see nice fast Evo chamber there for Bly. If he's hmm. just gonna skip blink speed and go carapace first, this is terrible for him. If a laser's literally just gonna okay melee first, same idea, right? Fifty gas cheaper, so you get mm -hmm. your link speed faster. But a laser's just gonna be able to flood lings, and Bly is not gonna see the benefits of that Evo chamber at all. Um, this honestly already looks very bad for Bly, right? And he's actually moving an overlord back. I think it may be okay. He actually has the double coverage, so he's fine. I was wondering if a laser could sneak the rest of the links out. It is a large map. Obviously, with link speed, that uh, size is shortened just by how quickly the links get across. So that's going to be what this comes down to. Laser's going to get ready to charge across the other side. Bly is making a spine crawler. He is a little bit aware something's a bit off. So fair enough to him. He's realizing it. But, uh, well, let's see if it's going to come into play here as laser is on the move. Yes, he is. He's already starting to poke on forward and seize the wall and trying to get started. He's trying to lay the wall in by using the links to body block the drone. Maybe actually going to make sure that there's a little bit less hit points on that building. Mm -hmm. So it's going to go down just a tiny bit faster. Is that going to make or break the difference here? A laser is bleeding out lings as this goes on. He is bleeding out lings. The good thing is that this is obviously not the Evo chamber that has the most service area. That's going to be the one in the middle. As you can see, the difference in just kind of that Evo taking a lot of damage as more lings get on it. A laser is going to make sure that Evo doesn't cancel, so at the very least, Bly is fully walled in. A laser's droned big time behind this, and he starts to lair. <laughs> the biggest benefit to Bly is the fact that he does have melee upgrade coming in, so he will have better lings very soon, but a laser's bit the worker lead behind this. Very fun. Yeah, it's going to be kind of funny. When does Bly... I feel like in these kind of situations, I'm always curious, when does Bly feel comfortable like moving out a bit and when because he's gonna have zirkling speed and like you said he's gonna have plus one melee but there's still kind of that 
back of your mind concern that you don't necessarily know if a laser is doing the super fast transition into like a spire or something if he is throwing down a roach warren if he is thinking about doing something else because a laser still hasn't thrown down a third base and blind should have the overlord cover cover should know that at least he's definitely seen no drone move there if nothing else right so mm -hmm. You know that Ali is going to back it up right now. He does have still the worker lead, and he does have less upgrades, obviously, on the lings at this point. So it is important he takes proper and good fights. As the lair is done for him, he will immediately drop down a spire. That's going to be a laser's uh, kind of throughput at this point. The lings are going to turn around and jump onto these other lings with the queens to help. That should go a long way. I feel like it is doing just about enough to trade kind of evenly here. You can see the power of that melee upgrade. Mm -hmm. Fly doing pretty well. Gets in the main base. And uh, we'll get a full scout around. The spy is on the natural. He hasn't actually seen it yet. He will see it now. Good job from Bly scouting absolutely everywhere, making sure there's nowhere that goes unchecked immediately. Nidus network, Lings, and apparently Roaches too. We're just going to go all out kill mode. I thought it was just going to be Ling Queen, but Ling Roach works as well. Oh, this is going to be really weird though, Wardy, because so Bly lost all of his links. He did make another round of links. This is actually very important because a laser is actually just charging across the map with his own links. And he's going to try and buy himself as much time and space. If a laser was able to get in across the map with his own lings, try and cause all sorts of havoc and mayhem, then maybe he could have actually delayed the effectiveness of that Nidus Worm. But as it stands now, Bly may have a golden opportunity to punish this fire play. I love this wall off, by the way. I mean, a laser also <laughs> knows, though, that it's two bases still from Bly, right? So you've got to be a little bit wondering what the heck's going on. Playing straight out on the bottom side again. The six meters start up and Bly. I mean, where's he going to put down the Nidus? I guess just underneath one of these overlords. I, actually, he's going to put it quite far back. Two wow. links from a laser are watching the overlord of Bly on the left. And the whole idea of that is to make sure he can't Nidus. So he's forced this overlord to go <laughs> back, uh, the Nidus to be backwards so that it's invisible. Very smart. I mean, now it's going to be a very slow push forward for these queens compared to what it could have been. So yeah, I mean, very good play from a laser. He was ready for the idea of Anitas. He's been watching for it. Mm -hmm. And then Bly's played around that. So very cool kind of just mind game part of this CVZ. As these mutas are going to get to work. First Overlord going down. Bly already supply blocked. His lings are still chasing around all over the place. Another Overlord going down. I feel as though laser's still having a pretty okay time of this. Okay, first Overlord has finally started on up. Another Overlord getting a little bit lower on hit points. And a laser's going to overwhelm the plus one melee lings there for Bly. And that's not the necessarily the big firepower of this attack. But still, I, he had the melee upgrade. So those lings would have been really, really helpful to keep alive for a little bit longer. Finally, another nice worm coming down in a much more forward position. But these queens have a lot of work to do to make sure that these mutas cannot just continue to do damage from the high Whoa. end or the from the high area area in the air that that's a word <laughs> that, that was a word yeah, dragon that was a set of words <laughs> that was a couple of meters going down by the way that was kind of expensive i mean especially the second meter i feel like could have been microed backwards as well so maybe a little lazy from a lazy he's now taking this a lot more seriously with spines coming up on the natural he has three bases Ooh. to two as he's going to dive the nidus on the back i mean sure i don't know if i really care if that goes down i actually don't really like transfusions being used there <sighs> because it means that you're using up a lot of your queen energy that might be needed in the future I mean, it shuts off reinforcements, but not for long. I mean, you just start a new one. So, like I said, I'm not sure I really loved him trying to save it. It just felt a bit unnecessary, but never mm -hmm. mind. Here we go. Another one comes up. A few meters and lings are still around the backside. Going to find another overlord. just going to chip through that. And Bly is still actually somewhat supply blocked here. And I think a laser just bought so much time that this is not going to be an issue for him. Yeah, the three spine colors are going to help out so, so much. Bly actually still has this big bank, especially when you talk about gas. He has a massive gas bank, a thousand gas still sitting there. And yeah, he's used some of it on morphing and some bailing stuff, but it actually sends the bailings back home because he's dealing with the counterattack and he realizes yeah. that those links are going to eventually bust on through. So I actually like that decision to use a couple of those bailings to buy some time there. Yeah, I'm down for it. I mean, keeping yourself alive back at home is just as important as everything else. So absolutely feel like that is a pretty Spores. okay way to play is yep i mean suppose move forward i mean basically you want to make this as difficult as possible for a laser to eventually bust through a laser's not exactly lose, using his own third base just yet he is going to find a chance to jump on a queen if we miss the transfusion there that's one queen down and I'm actually jump it back in the nidus in the end but any bit of energy you force off of these queens is going to be part of breaking out of this as well from a laser's point of view so that's also nice kills the nidus mm -hmm. in the back one more time Ooh. obviously we've got the forward nidus now as well some queens jumped out of there <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> jumped out of the wrong end of that uh, nice worm, but still ends up being okay. A laser going to start poking on forward over here again, looking for the queens, but 
as he does that, he also gets a couple of lings out over to the right-hand side. That's actually extremely useful because those lings now able to do attacks from different sides to try and do a little bit of a, a bit more of a surround. He can try and go for the counter offensive and ensure that there's no third base or anything coming down here for Bly. So I really like that he was able to get a handful of those out. And actually, I love the decision for a laser to go for this right hand fourth base. I, I actually think that's a really great play. Just sets you up for the future, right? Somewhere else you can go to yeah. that Bly is not likely to get to because it's off creep quite heavily. So Queens can't get there. So the Mutas mm -hmm. can protect it, um, which is a big deal. As it's kind of funny, right? As Lings attack the other side again, they're actually going to probably kill the Evo Chim before upgrades are finished. They might even see the Infestors too. So that's also a big deal. I mean, Roach has come back through the Nidus. Just kind of funny in general. I was thinking like Bly is containing the laser hard. And yet he's down a base. <laughs> like, what? Yeah. Well, it's kind of, kind of the backward scenario to what you expect. Um, we do see a Hydroden now from Bly. He's just going into all of the anti muta stuff, but very slowly compared to how long Mutas have been on the map. So now it was the laser. We're starting to build Roaches, and he can maybe actually do pretty well in Roach versus Roach because he is up a base and soon to be even two. Yeah. I do think there's a still interesting potential here for Bly, just because if a laser does get caught by like a fungal, the queens all pair together, and the Hydras, you know, start to get some big damage here. There is a very big investment for a laser in those mutas. He he still is very reliant on them. 25 mutas on the map is kind of rough. And as he loses one of those bases, a laser can transfer those drones over to the right hand base. But that does get discovered. Even if it is going to be a bit easier to defend with the mutas, you don't <laughs> also have to deal with this. <laughs> oh, nice fungal growth. The spines are just an issue, though. Like, microbial shroud doesn't stop the mm -hmm. spine crawler damage. And the spines are just going to make it very difficult to break the natural. LA does have coverage with Ling stopping the third base of Bly still. I mean, there's just so much to be done here. So, I mean, we're morphing in more ravages. I just, I mean, a laser feels like he's been in control, but it's still close enough that, like, a weird fight could maybe go wrong for him, and then Bly has this. Mm -hmm. But obviously, a laser has no motivation to attack down into the spores. Bly has no motivation to attack up into the spines. I, I, just a very weird scenario playing out in front of eyes. I'd say more than anything else, I do feel like Bly has a motivation to attack up just because that base on the right hand side is going to continue mining, right? Like that is the timer that Bly has. Bly is just going to continue to fall further and further behind economically. And I, he's even supply block right now and stuff, but you can see the supply difference right now. And this is with having a roach army against a player that is mostly on mutas and is only now starting to get out some roaches. So. Bly has to move up. He's going to try and get off some fungal growth. He's going to try and abuse the awkward angle that a uh, laser is up. But I mean, <laughs> Bly is moving up a choke point himself. That microbial shroud was absolutely meant, meant to be a fungal on the mutas. Oh my God, that's not part of the map train. <laughs> yeah. He 100% he, he oh tried to fungal the mutas and just had the wrong spell already previously selected yeah. or something along those lines there. The fungal misses as well. Obviously, Bly lost a lot in that previous attempt. And now we've got Ravages from a laser just going to slowly start breaking out of this contain with Corrosive Vials and resets a couple more Spine Crawlers, up 50 army supply, and Bly's just drained on cash. He does not have much mining left. Those two bases do not last forever in Legacy of the Void, and well, you can see the Mutalists still just trying to threaten and just wasting energy on these Infestors as they dance around. Some Lings and Roaches find some Roaches on the right side. It, it mm. definitely feels like now more than ever a laser has this first game on lockdown. Yeah, I, we're at a point where a laser has more roaches and ravagers than Bly. And that is a big turning point, I think, because that's not even including the extra damage from the mutas and everything. And sure, infestors with their fungal growths can get a bit done here and there. But if I think you if you remove the mutas from a laser's army, I still think he actually puts up a very, very close fight, if not wins it. I, I think he wins just without the mutas even, right? Yeah. Like. I, I was thinking this in the previous fight, I was like, the Mutas aren't here, and he's fine, and obviously he was kind of being attacked up into. Um, detection is nice, though. I mean, that is one <laughs> thing, although he's going to cross the file a bit, and... Yeah, okay, I mean, that, that's a moment, but... Yeah, you can see a laser has the numbers right now. Bly is very well known for staying around as long as possible. He's now started researching... Uh, well, he's got tunneling claws on the way to eventually, in theory, maybe get the roaches out of here. <laughs> obviously, a laser shouldn't be far from the Overseer that will allow him to kill pretty much everything. That was left. The infestors got away. They burrowed out a while ago. Uh, but yeah, the Roach Ravager just has to unburrow and the laser cleans up. And anyone else would have GG'd absolutely at this point. But Bly, he will fight until a laser is absolutely guaranteed to kill him. Because Bly's had so many games where he's come back from ridiculous positions, you can't blame him for staying in it that long. Yeah, uh, more than once. It only really takes a couple of times for you to think 
yeah, you know what? It is worth it. And that is also one of the kind of fun, frustrating things about playing against Bly is that he does stay in these games and sometimes he really does make you work and really put the final nail in the coffin. And that actually does tire you out for the following games. So a laser is going to be over here. He's going to be like, oh God, I'm getting all my mutas and uh, like fungal growth and stuff. Like, why hasn't this guy left? I'm so far ahead and everything. And it's just those little things that sometimes can throw your opponent off their game for the next one. Alayza like trying to cut off these few roaches over here. Mutas are back in the main <laughs> base as well. King Bly is just absolutely dead. Alayza could have just clicked up into the natural. I think he didn't need to go chase and hunt and corner off those roaches. Uh, either way, he's going to be pretty much fine. We can see that. And Alayza eventually going to get this game one against Bly. Bly putting up a cool fight, obviously. Alayza kind of became the aggressor early and kind of set the kind of game in motion. Um, mm -hmm. Bly had a fun response, obviously. Noticed it was a Spire, went for the Nidus. Really felt like Alayza made a lot of correct decisions from there, though. Really felt like he was constantly kind of setting up properly and just putting himself in some good places, right? I feel like at the end yeah. of the day. Uh, I really like that a laser was the one I was saying this at the beginning of this series or the beginning of the game that I really like a laser being the aggressive one uh, mm -hmm. initially and early on because it did sort of force Bly to play a little bit more reactive, which I don't think is the strongest form of Bly, right? Yes. The strongest form of Bly is where he's setting the pace of the game and these these are hilarious, fun beautiful fungals to watch tasteless, but uh, to what end? Yeah, these are like the fungals where your opponent has actually given up on trying to the point. It's just like, you can fungal me all you like. It doesn't matter. Into the natural we go. Hatchery is going to fall soon. We are out of Infestor Energy. GG. And the laser takes game number one. Yeah, I think those fungals could have been disruptor shots. And I still would have been okay with a laser's position in the game. Yeah, no, I'm down with that. No. He had so much. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, well... With that, uh, again, that is just going to be the first game, but a laser looking pretty solid there. I, I do have to give credit to Bly, though. There were a couple moments in that game where things didn't necessarily look that bad for him. He really did seem like he was starting to find little opportunities where maybe things could have turned out better in his favor. I think a laser followed up and kind of had like smart reactions to things. For example, I think if a laser had not gotten up that fourth base location, I actually think that would have been a little bit dicier because you were talking about this before. What was the onus for Bly to move up into the natural? If a laser doesn't have the economy to back up and continue to, I guess, get further ahead, I actually don't know that a Bly does have to attack up there. I think he could just contain, eventually find a chance to actually get up his own third base or something. And, you know, in that world, I can actually see Bly pulling something out there. No, definitely. Um... The, to be fair, like, I mean, Bly defended well against the initial, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, against the initial kind of attack and everything. He had a good response to seeing Aspire as well. Just kind of had to uh, get it going. So, yeah, I'm just trying to tell our referee that way. Yeah, Ready yeah. For game number two. Just because I feel like yeah. after they DC, they're not uh, responding. <laughs> totally fair. Uh, I think something that's kind of interesting and fun to note is that you're talking about Bly's kind of miraculous run through the Swiss format stuff and how a lot of people wouldn't have necessarily expected him to qualify, especially given that he's just kind of investing less time into StarCraft these days. But uh, I mean, I do think you kind of mentioned this at the very beginning. ZVZ is a tough matchup to pull out a lot of shenanigans with and really be the true Bly that you want to be in an unexpected way to be unexpected, I think is pretty tough. And it kind of goes to show you, like, even his Swiss format matches and stuff, he was winning a lot of, like, the ZVPs, even, like, the ZVT that he won versus Milky Cow and everything. This is kind of the first ZVZ he's had, and it's a tough one to actually make work because it's up against such a strong player as well. A laser is... Uh, he He's one of the best Zerg players in Europe, for sure. So it's a... Uh, it's going to be a tough ask, and the laser's already up 1-0. We'll see if uh, Bly can do something here in game number two on Babylon, it looks like. Yep, no, absolutely. Uh, Babylon, game two. I, I do wonder just how aggressive a laser keeps the series on his side. You mentioned that you liked it. I'm absolutely with you. But all of the ideas that you mentioned, just being able to be the aggressor and take away the, the mm -hmm. options of Bly a little bit and so on. So, yeah, I, I, I like that idea. I do wonder how much we'll stick to it. We'll find out in a few moments. Babylon's on map number two. We're loading on in. And uh, we're gonna take this into our second game of the uh, second game of the series. I mean, honestly, for, yeah. 
first game was 15 minutes, and it's pretty long. That was longer than I thought this series would last, honestly, so... <laughs> and especially with the way this... a lot of today went, I don't think that was a bad assumption either. Yeah, uh, this this almost... If, if we didn't have uh, Wayne versus Clem go the distance, this could have actually already been our longest series. Yeah. All right, I think we're on to... Uh, I'm going to swap over to this side of the map because I read Zerg Bly is not building a drone. He's building a spawning pool. And this man does like to drone pull as well, so we'll see what preparations the opponent makes to deal with that. And that opponent is up here on the top left-hand side, currently setting up 1-0. Let's look to see where that spawning pool comes down if he does want to utilize it for defensive capabilities. He is a laser. Yeah, position of the spawning pool on the edge, for example, can actually be a, a good way mm -hmm. to just block the spine crawlers setting up to be able to reach the low ground, for example. So there is actually something to talk about there. Obviously, I think Bly smart to go 12 pool after his opponent already did the more aggressive build. I don't think a laser was going to gas pool at least twice in a row. Pool first, maybe. But that's the kind of gamble Bly takes. I mean, I've seen Bly go 12 pool, drone pull five games in the best of five in a row, right? So, <laughs> you know, like, it yeah. never, never impossible. We'll see exactly what he wants to do here. Like I say, whether he's going to drone pull or not. And there we have. Yep. Well, they, they went and they stopped. And now they're going to go again. <laughs> they were just warming up. They were, they were just making sure they were going to be able to walk in the line across the map, so... The laser is uh, not going to have a lot of time to respond to this. The drones are going to somewhat go around that first overlord path as well. So he will not see this coming at all initially. And yeah, this is obviously just very well mapped out from Bly. The second overlord is going to spot it though. So laser sees the drone line. And now he knows the attack is coming. The spawning pool does not go down defensively. But what does go down defensively is the Evo chamber. So that is going to give him a hand. Stopping these spines from getting up right at the front. So it just buys you a bit of time, forces the drones to walk further, and that actually makes a massive difference. And sees it in time to mm -hmm. cancel. Oh my god, he cancels the hatchery to build <laughs> even more build Evos. Oh my god. I think he was actually he was like one Evo chamber away from or like a yeah. hatchery or something away from doing a full wall, which would have been wild to witness, but that is not gonna be worth it. He's gonna still just manage to get up two spine calls on the far right hand side, but there's already two spine calls starting over here for a laser, and they're actually been pretty safe. He's even getting in on top of one of Bly's own spine callers immediately. The difference it makes just delaying those initial spines is so critical. Like, it's really ridiculous just how good that is for you. And these drones are going to buy a bit of time here for a laser. I don't necessarily love that fight because his lings are fighting a spine. But, mm -hmm. you know, he's about to have a queen. His own two spines are about to finish. I don't even know if we necessarily really need to fight as much as he did. But it's fine. He's going to have it. GG's because yep. Bly has nothing left. One spine crawler finishes. The drones go around the back. There's another spine there. And uh, this is seven drones to five. I was going to say, I think even yeah. Bly would be crazy to try and macro out of this one. Even Bly knows that that is no longer a playable game. That is true. Uh, a laser goes up two to zero. You know, I, I do have to wonder there, Wardy. Bly, he already kind of delayed some of the drone pull stuff and like the shenaniganry there by, you know, I think he like maybe wanted a few extra minerals or something because he maps out like when he's how many minerals he needs when he leaves to like make the additional lings that he's going to flood out with or like the spine collars and stuff but i think even beyond that he dodged out of the way of the first overlord i actually think there was like an angle where he's hugging like the top wall of the mm -hmm. boulders and he reveals himself to the second overlord i actually think if he just is on the the south end of that pathway i don't know if you remember what i'm talking about yeah, i know like, exactly what you mean he just goes between the overlords i think he avoids yeah i think he avoids both of the overlords there Right? Yeah, I think he could have done. Just, uh, he had to go super far up to avoid the first, but then the second mm -hmm. one going just, like straight across the map, too, obviously kind of messed him up a little bit. So, uh, yeah. A little bit rough as we we'll get ourselves ready for game number three, then. Ancient Sister and Elaza just needs a moment, so we'll not go diving into mm -hmm. it too quickly. Elaza now just a map away, one map from making it to the round of eight. Of course, in that round of eight, he is looking to play against Clem. Which is not going to be an easy one, but uh, we saw Clem is absolutely not perfect, even in this matchup. So, yeah, we uh, saw him having some troubles, troubles with Wayne. So, yeah, a laser looking good for the moment. Up 2-0 against Bly in this bracket. And, of course, tomorrow we play out the rest of this EU bracket, which is amazing, by the way. Skillers versus DNS, Max Pax versus Showtime, Spirit versus Hero Marine, and Reino versus Ooh. Christiana is, like, a really fun set of games. Yeah, I feel like we got some interestingly different swiss format uh rounds and like how 
a lot of players that we expected would advance out advanced out but just kind of the place that where they maybe some of them advanced out is a little bit different than maybe i was expecting so i think mm -hmm. we ended up with some pretty interesting uh second half of like the round of 16 matches like max max versus showtime is not a match that i thought would be happening in like the round of 16 but no. that's a pretty sick match it's a very sick match it's very very fun as um yeah, the, tomorrow's games are going to be great. I think, you know, there's a couple matches excited for tomorrow, but I look at all of tomorrow's matches, I'm like, yeah, that could be fun. Mm -hmm. Maybe Reino Cristiano is, like, the most one-sided. And, of course, after that, we also start the mm -hmm. Americas tomorrow as well. So, Americas yes. starts tomorrow. Asia starts the day after that as well. So, again, the way it works is that the Americas and Asia take three days each. So, America starts tomorrow mm -hmm. and plays Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then Asia starts on Sunday, uh, on, on Friday, sorry, and goes Friday, Saturday, Sunday. With Europe taking every single day. Europe, you take so long, bro. What's up with that? Oh, well, players, that's why. Yeah, just so inconsiderate, these Europeans, man, having to play so many games throughout the week. So but you know many what? I'm not going to complain. Place. I'm not going to complain, Wardy, because uh, not only are there more StarCraft matches for us to watch, but also we've had quite a few 3 zeros, so maybe they <laughs> yeah. won't be that long. <laughs> you know, today was the short day on paper anyways, because it's just four best of fives, yeah. but there's like... Watch tomorrow is like we're back to like six best of fives or something. Not a lot, don't get me yeah. wrong. There's gonna be like five, you know, three, two, five game epic, <laughs> two, three, we had a draw, yep. three, two. A series didn't Spirit stop in 20 Hero minutes. Yeah. Surely that'll be short. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Spirit Hero Marine, the first time this year that they've actually played 30 minute macro <laughs> games every map. Like, you know, it, it, that's bound to happen to you. 12 pool again from the man in the top right, the red Zerg Bly. And down to the bottom left, the blue Zerg player from Team Liquid. He is a laser at match point. Wordy, wordy, wordy. You may have hinted at it before. Does it happen? Does Bly just say to hell with it? The drone pull yeah, every man, single I, game now. I mean, he genuinely has done this before in big tournaments as well. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously you can go just 12 pool without the uh, drone pull. I feel like that's such a like is it me i feel like i never see that in zvz anymore now i'm just like is that because i don't see a lot of zvz or is that like he's gonna pull <laughs> by the way he's already selected the drone so he's yeah. gonna pull um i just you know 12 pools in general have fallen out of fashion in a big way and we're gonna go oh you mm -hmm. can send the five minerals to the hatchery omg Right. so unfortunate when he is going to be five minerals short of making that extra spine crawler he's going to be regretting that man he's going to be regretting that but okay i do want to make a note that this is going to be a much later reveal than the first game so a laser had ample time to build up the full wall you got up like more of a wall in than you almost ever see against this kind of defense this time it's going to be a lot more normally time where he basically realizes it maybe 10 seconds before the units show up Instant drone pull, instant Evo chambers, boom. Mm. Boom. That's how you do it. Very solid. Very quick response there for a laser. Buy some time. Obviously, now he cancels up. He can get his own spine started. Ooh. He's going to cancel the last couple of Evos. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The, these couple of Evos on the right side, they just canceled a little bit late. Now we're going to get one more spine. The first couple of lings come out from a laser. He doesn't have a lot of lings right away because it took him a little while to kind of really get Ling started. I believe he's going to lose a spine of his own. Obviously, there are three spines of his opponent, so he kind of needs to do something if he's going to be down a spine crawler here. Because um, mm -hmm. these spines are in range of his base, and Bly finds the money for one more spine. I'm going to say that this is kind of working so far. Laser, well, let's see. The queen pops out. This turns into a pretty good fight for him. I mean, you can mine for a little while. He's going to try and move his own spines up around the top side and hope that that's going to be enough for him. His queen's kind of blocking the spine, though. Now the uh. lings are going to dive. This is going to be what it comes down to. The drones are going to pull as well. So this is it. This is what this life of the tournament is for for Bly. Spines are fighting spines. Spines are fighting lings. There's three spines versus two. The queen goes down. I want to say that with this amount of spines, that Bly is absolutely A-OK -okay and that he's probably got this. Uh, thoughts? I, I'm totally with you. I actually, I was really confused by Elaze's positioning on where he was burrowing those two spines because they weren't covering each other. They were so far on the north side. I, Yeah, I, I feel like this is the best move, even though I don't think this should theoretically work. But this is the best move for a laser, right? Is that you just go across the map and you just basically try and delay things there and you have enough minerals to build your own spine, spine crawler which the, yeah. you you have to build the spine and then you have to unburrow it so it's not just bleeding off of creep but 
then it just becomes a map with no creep spread. You just wait out until these spine crawlers all just can't burrow, and then you have more units, right? That's the way that a laser can still win this. Yeah, decides where to put the spine crawl is actually kind of important. There's a lot of link mm. supply though, man. He's just been building links. He's been mining this entire yeah. time, so it takes a long time to come across the map, and I'm gonna say that I think Bly has got it. These drones will die, GG is called, and Bly is gonna win game number three. We're not gonna have a 2-0. Yeah, nice. uh, three really, zero, really well done there. Yeah, <laughs> really well done there by Bly. There was a few things that went really wrong there for a laser. Like he bled off, I want to say, like two drones really early on. I think it was just like drones that were working away at the spine without pulling the rest of his workers over for them. And like he ended up losing those two, which already sets you a little bit further behind. The spine crawler that the first spine crawler for a, a laser, like one of the first three, got canceled very early on and you were kind of also talking about how a laser just he wasn't ever really diving and committing like maybe he was just waiting for the queen but when there are four spine crawlers going up i think that that's just like the time you have to go for it right because every spine crawler that's building also means there's like during that time there's actually less dps because there's one less drone or one like one less little bit of extra army value until that spine crawler finishes so if there's too many drones that are just building spine cars, then you don't actually have enough to win the fight, and then you maybe just end up losing there. So I, I'm kind of surprised that Laser didn't pull the trigger a little sooner there. Yes. No, I mean, just only having two lings feels so weak because then you've got like two lings yeah. just kind of went like you can't do anything to the spines. It's just I don't know what exactly the the difference was compared to last time to only have a couple of lings start. I don't know if he just didn't start them in time or what the case was, but. We'll see what happens going into another round because mm -hmm. we do not chill as we have in the bottom right side our blue Zerg from Team Liquid, a laser. And up on the top left hand side of the map, our red Zerg player who is not going for a 12 pool. It is Bly. Yeah. The 12 pool. And, uh, <laughs> I was, I was almost excited by the prospect of seeing him go just go for just a 12 pool doing it, every yeah. single game. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you, man. I feel like right now, we'll see if a laser hatchery first or not, because I almost feel like if I'm blind, I'm like, man, okay, now he definitely goes pool first, so we'll see. Mm. If a uh, laser does, it doesn't look like it, gonna go hatchery first, so maybe he could have got away with it one more time. As you see this hatch coming on down, getting positioned, and it's gonna be the same on both sides of the map, so back to a more normal game. Last time mm -hmm. it felt like this was at the very start of game number one, so it's, it's been a while. In fact, this is the first time we've yeah. seen Hatch First versus Hatch First. <laughs> that is very true. You know, I actually really wonder if a laser had lost to the 12 pool drone pull on game number two, would he actually be opening up with pool first now? Because I, I think it's like the fact that he won one and lost one. I think it's a lot easier to justify and be like, yeah, well, you know, I can just go for the hatch first and like not try and play too much into his game. If he had ended up being down 0 and 2 and both of them to the 12 pool drone pool, like that actually could have changed the way that this whole game would have gone. And I actually would have loved blind not going for the 12 pool drone pull again because it'd just be like, yeah, a laser has to respect it at that point. Yeah. And that's very true. Like you just have to respect it and then. I mean, there's just so many mind games that start wearing and you're trying yeah. to bluff the other one, right? I mean, is there ever really a right <laughs> call versus just getting, you know, being lucky? Yeah, I mean, probably it is, but... Do you just see this game? I guess we don't have to ask any of those questions. Two queens apiece, few lings coming out. We are mirrored to open the game. So, mirroring it out in the early stages here. Always fun. I've just seen that overlord kind of poking mm -hmm. forward, seeing some creep, notice and attach first. It's pretty much all the scouting you want, so turns this overlord away now and just gets it ready to watch for third base in the near future. Yeah, I, I think something worth mentioning on Grezvan is compared to some of the other maps and stuff, like, for example, map number one that we ended up seeing, you don't have a high ground to your natural. You also don't exactly have the easiest time just walling off your natural, you know, getting a full Evo Chamber, Roach Warren, whatever wall. You can definitely do it, but it takes a little bit of extra effort and everything to like get some of that crease spread over there to get that proper wall off. It's a little bit more vulnerable than maybe say it would be on some of the other maps. So I do think it does maybe change some of the potential strategies we could end up seeing. You could still do a lot of that stuff, but it's just a bit more annoying. It's a little bit harder to pull that kind of stuff off. Yep, 
No, absolutely is our uh, lair. Comes up from Bly. Gets that starter. I was going to say, he's not spending that gas, which means that you're kind of waiting to, uh, you know, he's kind of waiting with that gas to just sort of mm. do something. I was going to say, if you're not going to build link speed, then you're pretty much going to play two base. Um, that means you're not going to take a third because you don't have link speed to protect the third. So you play two base roaches with the lair to get roach speed. Um, a lot of the time, if you figure this out quickly enough as the opposing player, you can just sort of say, oh, I'm just going to get into my own lair and kind of basically do what you're doing only with, you know, a third mm -hmm. hatchery. And that's generally pretty good. We do have Link Speed finished, though, from a laser before he realizes, and Bly's playing the absolute complete mind game. Triple gas behind this. Melee upgrade starts. I imagine the melee upgrade may even be a full commitment, but he's going to go Spire and just Spire, just yeah. middle Ling. And then you, that's why I think he maybe keeps the melee upgrade instead of actually faking it out as missiles. Yeah, surely it's got to be a Spire once that lair finishes on up, as that would make the most sense here. So... Roach speed starts up just yeah, as a, a fake, fake out because yeah. that is part of the wall. Yeah. I was just thinking as well, by the way, also in the last game, the, you know, when these drones run away, imagine he has the natural mm -hmm. hatchery. I know he's canceling this hatchery and he's using the minerals elsewhere. But like, I remember mm -hmm. back in the day, one of the big things they used to do was just build the Eva wall because the whole idea was then the spines were not mm -hmm. in range of the low ground. And then you can build a low ground spine and your opponent can't actually, mm -hmm. like they have to move their spine into position in range of your spine and then you can mine off the low ground and then you're kind of okay so i wonder like if that yeah. was maybe an op obviously it wasn't an option for a laser by the time he actually cancels the hatchery but like i wonder what makes him cancel the hatchery versus because the 12 pool drone pull hasn't changed so i wonder what's changed to make him want to like cancel the hatchery i don't think you can afford all the evo chambers that's if true. you don't cancel the hatchery I, mean, but I don't think he even needs to make all of them it's maybe a bit overkill that's true but but yeah, yeah. I mean, just just something else that kind of kept in my mind before this game mm -hmm. got going no i i think that's totally fair I, i'm kind of with you and like i in, in my opinion i i wouldn't mind if he like did one less evo chamber and mm. just starts up the spines like a little bit faster or something because you know it's coming at that point right so having your spine start before theirs is pretty sick yeah, absolutely. Ling Roach, uh, as a laser, made a lot of units to get aggressive with. The third hatchery obviously mm. doesn't exist from Bly. As these Lings come forward, they don't have Ling speed still. But a laser's seen how many Lings there are, so you've got to assume something is happening. And now we're going to see mm -hmm. these Lings and Roaches of a laser. Still not quite, I think, sure what they really want to do. Now I just never from a laser. They can the wall, right? Okay. Like, yeah. There's nothing stopping them from just hitting the wall. They can actually yeah. just go after the Roach horn if they want to. Yeah, I mean, I think just knocking down and gaining access would be better, as we see our lings. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go on the counterattack, going to grab a few of these roaches already. So again, a couple of kills. It, it, I mean, you can see a laser's drop the night as he realizes what's going on. He's adding extra queens. He knows that this is just going to be ling muta. So he's starting to play around that idea. The lings on the map keep him busy. Here's the mutas pushing the roaches back. Bly's supply is not great at the moment, but obviously if nothing hits the mutas back, then it becomes much better. There is an Overlord top side that might be the point of Nidus. The Nidus is important because that's how the Queens are going to get into the game. Mm hmm And if he goes for that top Overlord Nidus, then it is really, really good to be dependent on actually getting over into the main base. So Bly gets over into the main base of a laser, and these Mutas, they're knocking out some of the Overlords on the front lines and everything. And he... Okay, wait. The, the Lings, they did sneak on past the Nidus, right? They, they should have seen it. Yes. Oh my I god, believe. he didn't see it. Oh my god. He goodness. didn't see it. Yeah, he absolutely just missed it. It literally looks like it should have been scouted, but it wasn't. I think a laser's kind of past the idea of Nidusing now, anyways. Like, I feel yeah. like he just didn't have the timing you know, or have the units in the right place, and he was a bit scattered in mm -hmm. general. So I think he decided not to Nidus when he started up the road speed and just sort of, you know, began to go for a very different approach here instead. And um, yeah, now we see the hydrogen from a laser, too. So absolutely, he's kind of beyond that point and. Just going to be seeing the mutas still kind of hunting down a roach or two here or there. I mean, this worked out for Bly. He, he got away with it. The links <laughs> were able to trade. Well, killed some workers. Bly is still down a lot of workers, but the idea still being is that the mutas have a lot of potential. Biggest issue is he has just lost the third hatchery, though. So that's going to be a bit more expensive, <laughs> and that's going to be something more difficult to recover from. Yeah. I honestly wouldn't even mind something like a laser nidus worming between the natural and third or something. Just have the sound effect go off to keep Bly a little bit occupied and make him like retreat back but also I guess the Nidus Worm is actually kind of helpful for the Queens getting around I, I guess it actually would be more helpful if it was Nidus Worm in the main and then he can Nidus Worm between the third and then the main base that actually would be quite nice because he is purely on a Queen defense right now 
Yeah, we do Ooh. see the uh, spore just gonna come through. The roaches, the queens coming around, and a couple of the queens. The main bay is gonna get jumped on. I mean, any uh, anti air you kill off is gonna make the future muters. Uh, usage that much better. We do, of course, have Hydras on the way. We're going to lose some meters here One, flying overhead. Two. And now Ling's on the right side as well. Mm, yeah, and that means that the third base is extremely vulnerable because all the queens got pulled away. The Roaches are trying to go for a counterattack at the same time as well. So uh, a couple of Hydras getting picked off by the Lings. Why is finding so much damage even the no. plus one melee Lings. And uh, Mutas will eventually clean this up. How much damage can a laser find before they die? Yeah, I mean, at least you pull the meters back so you get a chance for more and more Hydras to come out. Which gives you maybe an army that can actually go across the map. I mean, at this point, if you could get a Nidus, maybe still on the 12 o'clock Overlord, right? Nidus over there and just get, like, Queen Hydra across the map. I think you've still got a pretty good fighting chance. Balance Speed not done yet. It looks as though Bly's obviously just going to morph Balance and go aggressive. So maybe a laser doesn't need to do any of that. Just sit at home, play defensive, get yourself a bit of creep so you have maneuverability between your bases and... Just get the defensive mode mm -hmm. on. You know, that's what you're setting up to. Maybe it's time to stop counterattacking as well because you keep throwing away a lot of units with those counterattacks that maybe just aren't necessary. The uh, drones oh. trying to figure out which way is the actual escape, <laughs> but uh, they, they kind of second guess themselves a couple times. A few of them chose poorly. And uh, yeah, five of them go down. Not the end of the world there, I would say. The laser's still doing okay economically, and the tunnel and claw roaches are going to be a nice opportunity for. A laser to fire back a little bit. There's a single overseer, but it's just with the army and with the mutas right now. So there's actually not going to be a whole lot of detection. There's no spore crawlers or anything. There's been no reason for Bly to make spore crawlers on his side of the map. So these tunneling claw roaches could really get actually quite a bit of damage done. Yeah, this is this time there's just not being that pullback preemptively. The Bailings, though, are going to get a oh, jump on these hydras. hydras. Yep, no roaches in the front to protect you. The Hydras have to go splitting, and they are still a lot of the anti-air you're relying on. The Queens do take a fight against the Mutas. Don't forget the Roaches are active during this time. You'll start to see Bly losing workers here. A couple of Hydras that are left alive come over, and I think it's just about enough to scare those Mutas away. And that is going to be a laser with a big hold. 13 kills on the other side, and still counting as these Roaches are not being stopped. And that is where a laser really gets the lead on the tail end of this fight, because he's just getting a lot of worker damage done. That is going to help him stay in a very good position. Yeah, and at the same time, Anitis and Worm did pop out on the bottom left-hand side by the fourth base. So as all of the drone damage happens, a laser has opportunity now that he's forcing so many of the units to pull back home. He could very well try to go for the big, fast counteroffensive, and that's exactly what he's going to do. Pulls a bunch of the Queens and Hydras over here. He's going to be able to knock out the drones over the fourth base. And I mean, with that happening, uh, is there actually almost any mining happening right now for Bly? <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't feel like there should be the uh, income is spiking into Eliza's favor. There's just going to be seeing more drones being pulled away yet again. They've just been running around non-stop, man. The Zero Chamber trying to build the plus two melee upgrade, likely to go melee. down. Yeah, that's obviously a pain. We just have only muters, and only muters just can't really do it. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not a lot of Hydras. The muters are going to go. I and mean, yeah, mm -hmm. it wasn't enough Hydras, so not enough anti-air in play. Eliza will get cleaned up, but... At this stage, to say the damage is done would be kind of an understatement because you know, there's been a lot. He has killed, you know, some drones on the other side, Bly, but he's got a real long way to go to really even it out, especially as another base goes down. And, I mean, he's just not mined this entire time as well. The drones have been constantly mm -hmm. on the move. Yeah, I, I feel like the best way I can describe it is it kind of feels like one person's trying to defend their homeland, like from the top of a skyscraper or something. I can snipe down at these guys with swords, but all they have is a nerf gun. It's like, okay, cool. I think you will eventually maybe kill this person with a nerf with your nerf gun, but uh, I think they're gonna destroy everything else in the meanwhile. This is this is not going well. Just all you don't even have to actually kill the mutas anymore. All you have to do is just kill drones and kill hatcheries as you bleed out the units because the muta count isn't high enough, and there's not enough of an economy for Bly to ever make enough mutas to ever actually take a real fight. Yep, no, absolutely, right? I think you just need to build up as much as possible, and I mean, a laser shouldn't be able to really lose this game, because even if Bly comes across the map and does a lot, like, he's got so much to do, and with, you know, any amount of spores up, like you mentioned, it just isn't really realistic at this stage, and yeah, I mean, that's the issue. I mean, two drones is now, you know, 25% of Bly's economy, so even that is a pretty big loss. <laughs> Yeah, there, there was a moment there where those drones that were running away were every single drone that Fly had. And if he actually ended up losing that, he wouldn't have had, he only had 18 minerals and he literally could not have remade another drone.
would have been a uh, an awkward spot to find himself in. He does find in quite a bit of damage with the counter offensive over here, but these aren't even plus two melee bailings, so it takes two of them to actually kill the drones. That means some of them manage to survive for a little bit. And uh, yeah, even with those going down, 27 drones is still high enough of account for a laser alongside the rest of his army. I think they're still going to feel pretty com comfortable pushing on forward. Seven hydras as well. With, th uh, with seven queens to join forces to fight nine mutas. Yeah, I, I think a laser actually wins the fight now, finally. Yeah, absolutely. Just needs to get everything together, just keep on pressuring, and he's even going to Nidus into the natural. That's been the biggest issue, mm -hmm. right? Like, his Nidus is actually really far away still, so Nidus into the mm -hmm. natural just means now he can really keep on putting the pressure. Kill this hatchery, move into the main, just take it step by step. I mean, at this stage, if you're Bly, I, I guess you try counterattack, but the muta count isn't high enough to fight spores, and that's forever the issue now that your mutas can't go and win the game on their own. Like, there are scenarios where sometimes, like, this game would have gone Bly's way because he just has too many mutas, and you can't defend them as a laser, but the spores versus the current muta count, is just that's just not the case here, so... Yeah, this is just a case of Bly deciding when the GG time is going to be. Yep. Uh, taking bets on uh, whether you think that Bly will wait until he has zero drones or if he's going to actually wait until the army dies. It looks like the army dying is going to be the first thing on the docket over here. Bailey actually does manage to connect with quite a few of the Hydras here, but at the end of the day, he knows it's not going to be enough. And a laser 